Hey guys, some of my friends who are mechanics laugh at some of the rudimentary things that I do. Today I'm gonna tap a screw hole. And uh, they're like, oh, oh, I can do that. I, I learned how to tap a screw when I was four years old. I was working for Caterpillar, ficking broken, broken engine block threads when I was nine years old. Well, they're, they're lying. Tapping is an art and it took me a long time to learn to do it without breaking the tap. What we have is threads in a hole that I have to create right there. This one, no threads. There's no threads, no threads. This one is ready to go. I got my screw and uh, there's certain things about this that you need to know for it to make any sense. First off, if I can get a shot, let me see if I can zoom out, focus it. Yeah, and then zoom in. There's two measurements on a screw that count, the major and the minor diameter. The minor diameter is the inside thread, the, the skinniest part of the screw. And the major diameter is the outside of the thread, the nominal size of the thread. In this case, it's an M5, which means metric, five, uh, metric number five. And in case you give a crap, it's a 0 0.8 thread pitch, so not like that matters. But that tells me that I need the right drills for this major diameter and for the minor diameter. The minor diameter is the hole you're going to cut the threads into. Uh, I can't see what I'm doing. Let me take this out. Whoa, cuticles, ugly, ugly man hands. All right, so I just did this one. It came out pretty nice. What I did is, there's a couple of things that have to happen. I have a backing plate, or actually it's the top. It's upside down right now. And to get these holes between this piece and this piece perfectly lined up, this way and this way, I solder them together the way they need to go. Then I drill my pilot hole, which is, in this case, uh, I didn't want it to break off. So I used this one, you can see it's loose. That's what I started with, and I started the hole with that, and then I moved to the minor diameter one, which is in my drill press right now. Lovely Chinese drill press. So what I have now is a through hole. Can we see down that? No, not really. Uh, it goes through both parts. I need the top part, in this case it's the bottom, but in this orientation, the top part needs to have threads. The screw is going to go through this way. Like I said, it's upside down. The bottom part, which is actually the top, needs a clearance hole, which is a bigger hole. That's the one that allows the threads to slip right through without touching anything, but without being so loose that you have a lot of wobble and slop. That's this drill bit right here, which you can see. Well, you can't see. It's bigger, though. It's going to be see right there they're they're definitely different sizes so enough about that this is a tap in fact it's kind of a cheap tap it's just a, a regular old through tap it's tapered at the end you can see how the the threads at the very point look like they're worn off it's actually they're cut like that and as you screw it in the hole it's the minor size of the hole this is the hole that I have right at the tip and then the threads grow until they're full sized the problem with this is you must guide the tap in without any kind of flex or torque, side to side, back to forth, anything. The hole is straight. Once you get it going, it will guide itself and become a straight hole. It's, it's great like that. But then when you turn it, let me zoom back out. When you turn it, you must apply pressure straight down and straight around. You can't flex it sideways front and back, it must be perfectly straight or else the tap will snap off and you will whine and cry because the part you spent so much time making is now ruined because it is damn near impossible to get a broken tap out of a hole. They're very tight when they're in there and there's tricks to help with that just in case it does break off. But pretty much if I break this off in the hole, the tap is junk, this is junk. All this work I did cutting and shaping and all this, it's garbage. So I'll show you how to do this real quick. My wife is going to film it. So here you go. Let's uh, zoom it in and then just keep right here. Can you see that? 
Is that good? Okay. So what I'm going to do now, I don't have this product called Tap Magic. It's a really nice special oil for taps. I use this three-in-one household oil. You see that? Mm -hmm. I don't use much, just a few drops. Oh, and it's kind of nasty, so I, uh, I lay this on my leg because it drips down through the hole. Okay, make sure you're getting this in here. Try to get the whole tap. Got it? Mm -hmm. Okay. Tap and handle, I should say. Now I got to kind of press and turn, and I got to check 90 degrees. Make sure it's straight this way and straight this way, and it's not. You need to come that way a little. This is a royal pain in the ass. But if you learn to do it, whoops, that's not good. If you learn to do it properly, you can make things that go together. You're not just stuck making wooden decoy duck things and ashtrays and other little weird things with your arts and crafts shit. You can actually make mechanical stuff. There. Now, see, when I cut, see if you can zoom in on this. Or lean forward or something. The tap threads are razor sharp, high speed steel. They're very hard. This is nickel silver. It's like, you know, roughly 70% copper and 25% nickel and 5% zinc. It's harder than brass. It's much harder than copper, but it's still a copper alloy. It is way softer than this. This high-speed steel is pretty hard. You can cut into uh, car parts and stuff with this. Car parts usually use uh, for basic stuff is uh, called mild steel, which is pretty soft. Now, I have to turn it, get my fingers in here, very carefully so that it turns this way only and doesn't wobble. I'm applying pressure, and you go very short distances, and then you back up, and you have to break the chip that you just cut out of the threads. And you have to keep doing this until it goes all the way through. In this case, we're going three-eighths of an inch through. That's how thick the top and the bottom parts are. And the big danger here is you've got to watch these flutes, the cutouts right there. They start to twist. If you're twisting the tap, it's about to snap off and ruin your day. So you have to be really careful to not exceed that. It always stays straight. When it starts to bind, go back. There's a piece of chip you just took out. You got to break it out. It goes into the flute, comes out the bottom. Eventually, a bunch of stuff's going to come out the bottom. So now I just have to sit and do this very slowly and carefully until I'm all the way through. Right now, the threads are still at the expanding point. So. It's very stiff, and the deeper I go until they pop out the other end, the stiffer it gets, the more dangerous it gets. And then suddenly you break through the other side with a full-size thread, and it just threads in and out like a screw. So right now it's very stiff. I'll go a little more. Very careful. You've got to back it up just as carefully as you go forward. You cannot apply anything but twisting motion that's straight up and down, because you can break the tap going backwards too. You really, trust me, you don't want to break a tap off in the hole. It just is a, night, a nightmare. I've done that on cars. I've done that on this tuba that I'm working on. I was cutting out these holes. Some of y'all might remember the little thing I made I was nicknaming the Lego. Man, I broke three taps in that. That cost me a lot of money. The little skinny ones break all the time, and that's what that was. This one, I decided when I make this, this last one used smaller fasteners. You can see these are a good bit smaller. Because of that, and I'm going through now, I used two skinny pieces. Now I'm using a skinny and a fat. Eighth inch, eighth inch, eighth inch, quarter inch. That's a lot of distance to go through with the little skinny one. So now I'm using this thicker post with a thicker tap, and that makes it a lot safer. Hand it to me. I'll come back with more in a minute. 